He makes videos about computers on the internet. On the internet. Timmy Joe PC Tech. PC Tech. Tech reviews. Computer parts. You betcha. Threadripper! Yes! Clickbait. Don't have. Don't. I'm sad. Hi. Timmy Joe. Make videos about the computers on the internet all the time, all the time. But this year. Uh, it's not like last year where I had Threadripper and it was 1950X and it was just so fun. Uh, the financial person buying stuff for me back then. Uh, and AMD didn't see fit to send out a review sample for a little old me, uh, which is totally justified. I only have, well, almost 60,000 subscribers. So if you're not subscribed, go hit the subscribe button. There's only 60,000? That's a lot. Maybe next year. But basically, since I don't have... Uh, the crazy thread ripper to show you, and I don't, I can't do testing, uh, and it's not like last year where you know I get to bust out some Fire Strike records with a 1080 Ti and a 1950X right before the 18 core came out for the Intel. No, this year I'm I'm alone. I'm um, so alone. Anyways, but I have an idea. Okay, I've been thinking a lot about this and how things are about to change. Uh, well, they they've already begun. A uh, ridiculous amount of computer stuff is going to be changing over the next couple of years, which will render your computer right now to be a complete POS. It will be worth nothing, okay, your computer now. And I have evidence to support this because things are uh, really ramping up. And go back 20 years, there's a story to be told that is about to mimic what's happening now. And I think uh, it's, it's worth a ponder. So bear with me. We'll talk about this. So... We go back, uh, you know, just 10 years ago, you could still use a, you know, Core 2 Quad 6600 or maybe one of the higher 9 series ones or whatever. A quad core, you know, maybe around 4 gigahertz, uh, you know, to get a, a gaming experience going. So you could go buy a 10 year old computer now, put a 1050 in it, or maybe it's even got a decent graphics card and enough to play Fortnite or all your, you know, fun little games that you play with your friends. But if you go from 2008 and go all the way back to 1998, you were not playing any modern games. PC with an Intel Pentium 2 processor for $1,598. With a computer from 1998 in 2008. And that's what's going to happen again. In 2028, it will be laughable if you're still rocking a Core i5 or if you're still rocking a Ryzen first gen to, a, I think, a lesser extent, but still at least one of the, you know, Ryzen 3s or something like that. Because Threadripper has changed the fucking game. Threadripper has thrown a monkey wrench into things. And the stagnation of Intel and AMD's inability to play catch up and actually have a good processor until last year really stagnated the market. So like I say, you can take a quad, Core 2 Quad and even to this day, play decent games on it. But we're at another 1998 crossroads, okay? Go back to 1998, this was the CPU or, uh, well, I don't have a, uh, a Pentium 2, but that was a thing. Pentium 2, 500 megahertz, see? I got slides, bitches, boom! So, Intel Pentium 2, 1997 to 1999. This was a high-end uh, Intel offering for the consumer back then. And if we check this next page, we see that the Mendocino, launched in August of 1998, was up to 500 megahertz. Okay, that's a single core with 500 megahertz. Rocking SD-RAM. That was, if you were lucky, 133 megahertz. And maybe you had uh, 256 megabytes of this stuff. That would have been a lot back then. And maybe you had a graphics card that was AGP. And uh, this is a 3D effects. I just grabbed whatever. Anyways. Uh, and, you know, and you're playing the original Half-Life. Ah! Stop! Stop! That would have been pretty sweet, you know? But then, uh, you know, you might have to bring a, a document to school. You popped in your you know, floppy drive. Boom. All this stuff was effectively rendered completely obsolete by 2005. By 2005, things had really changed. We went from uh, Durons and Athlons, single cores and sub gigahertz to, you know, Athlon X2s with two cores. Athlons with, uh, you know, that were pushing uh, three, four gigahertz. Pentium 4s. Uh, you know, with hyper threading, stuff like that, that were reaching, you know, speeds of four gigahertz. So 
by 2005, if you had a, you're still your computer from 1998, you were lucky if you could even browse the web properly. And you probably were using uh, you know, a modem, a 56K modem. I can remember, I had a, in 1998, my uh, computer was a 75 megahertz Pentium 1, and it was uh, pretty much garbage, you know, within a couple of years for doing anything. And the school had just upgraded to, you know, good computers. And I remember, like, just wanting so bad. And then I got a 600 megahertz uh, Celeron in around maybe 2000 or 1998, 2000. And, uh, you know, we had upgraded to, uh, you know, uh, the ability to play Half-Life 2 and go on DSL internet. And things really started to ramp up. But then, uh, you know, by about 2008, AMD wasn't able to compete, and Intel left the last 10 years to stagnate and just do very incremental updates. So, you know, we see things like uh, going from 500 megahertz all the way to quad core with, uh, you know, 4 gigahertz in 1998 to now that almost, you know, just even a few years ago, still being the mainstay, although IPC, you know, had uh, increased and stuff like that, but, uh, you know, really left a lot of performance on the table. And now that Threadripper is around, things are going to change very, very fast again. And by the year 2020, the year 2022, if you're still rocking a Core i5, you're not playing any modern games. You're not doing anything like video editor or anything like that because things are like i say going to change real real quick so i have some slides to uh, you know to, to show this so even two years ago in 2016 you could get uh 10 core from intel and pay 1800 dollars for it okay that was the uh 6950x this was their high-end uh skylake you know, and it was uh, you know pretty astonishing at the time. Ten cores, because the consumer desktop still had four cores, eight threads. But this was a very expensive processor that only the richest of riches of people, uh, you know, were looking into. And this wasn't meant for gaming or anything. That, that it was meant for rendering and you know video editing and uh, stuff like that. But then we look to now. And for the exact same price, seventeen ninety nine, you can get more than triple the cores. 32 of them to be precise. Threadripper has changed the game. Even last year when the 16 core launched, you know, it was a, what, a 1200 bucks for, or, two, or maybe it was a thousand bucks for 16 cores. And the Ryzen, you know, 1700 was eight cores, just two off from that $1,700 processor. And, you know, uh, you can get a 1700 back then for under 500 bucks. Things are dramatically changing right now for the better. And, uh, you know, it's interesting because Intel's playing catch up now, which is something AMD did for t t t maybe 15 years. Ridiculous. So here is a Cinebench score of a 6700K. And it's getting about a thousand points in Cinebench. This is two years ago. This is the best consumer CPU you could buy if you weren't going with that. 10 core extreme edition, okay, and a, and a whole other chipset. Now you get a 2700X and you're almost matching the performance for what, 25% uh, of the price? You know, I got one behind me there. It'll almost do 2000 in Cinebench. That's exactly what this thing did, the 10 core, the 6950X. So in two years, we've gone from, uh, you know, just a regular old consumer processor behind me doing as good as the best processor you could buy. And then you want to see the, uh, you know, Cinebench results. I'm sure looking at Steve here from Hardware Unbox. He shows that uh, at stock speeds, the Threadripper 29WX uh, is getting 5,054 in Cinebench. <laughs> that is ridiculous. That is uh, ridiculous. That's, that's crazy. Okay, that's more than doubling the performance you could get for the same price two years before that. Way more than doubling it. It's ridiculous. So, uh, in conclusion, we've gone from floppy drives and ID hard drives with, uh, you know, uh, 40 gigabytes to, you know, ridiculous. Th th this USB stick has 64 gigs of space. That's more than your ID hard drive did 20 years ago, you know? And... You know, you're looking at the speed of things. This is ridiculously slow. Try and access information on an IDE hard drive, I dare you. You'll die before you'll get the damn information off of it. Now, uh, you know, for 100 or for what, 40 bucks, you can get an SSD. This is actually 35 bucks with 120 gigs on it. That's SATA, you know, six speeds. It's awesome. 
And then, if you want to go even further than that, you've got NVMe has become a mainstay. It's on every mid-range Ryzen B350 motherboard, pretty much. It's you know uh, just a, a thing that's available. It's even on some of the lower-end Intel chipsets because this is just a means of storage. And they're Optane, of course, they want to include support for that. But you look at where CPU coolers have come in the 20 years. This was a CPU cooler from you know around 19. 98 and now <laughs> this is a cpu cooler you know and a performance one even 10 years ago looked more like this and you know now we've got water support you've got a video card that looked like this you know the, to going 20 years later to like this this is something you could sort of buy i mean you can buy a, a hybrid 1080 ti but i've made my own but you know things have come crazy and then like ram you know it's not just cpus here you went from 133 megahertz SD RAM to, you know, DDR1, which, you know, really bumped up the speeds, but to what, 400? This one's 500. 500 megahertz. This is 4,266 megahertz, and it's 16 gigabytes when, you know, you were lucky if you had 256 megabytes, uh, you know, uh, t t 20 years ago. 10 years ago, you were lucky if you had four. Now we got 16, and the, the speeds are out through the roof. So... What I'm getting at with all of this is that we're in a 1998 position again, where your hardware is going to be shit in two, four years, because AMD will no doubt have a consumer Ryzen 2700X, whether it's the 4700X or whatever it is, that's a 16 core, maybe a 20 core, maybe a 32 core, as a mainstay consumer desktop, you know, uh, processor, in at least you know four years is being generous. You know, the Ryzen could come out with Ryzen 2 next year. The IPC is as good as Intel because they're running seven nanometer, and Intel can't even figure out ten. And uh, you know, maybe they make a 16 core Ryzen mainstream that the you know is able to hit 4.5 gigahertz and has the IPC of a you know 7700K from KB Lake or something like that. That would be awesome. It's coming. So if you're still rocking a Core i5 quad core and you think you're going to be gaming with it in a few years, no. There's no way. We have come to a point where if you're rocking a 1998 computer or a 2018 computer, by the time 2002 rolls around or 20, uh, 2022, your shit is going to be obsolete. So right now, get it in while you can because Core i5s have never been cheaper and you can still game on them. And, you know, budget graphics cards are kind of hard to run by, but they're out there, you know. Like I just reviewed a 760, pretty good performance still for under 100 bucks. You can get a Core i5 on a motherboard on eBay for, you know, around $120 these days, American. Put a, you know, slap eight gigs of DDR3 on it. That's what, another 80, you know, 60 bucks maybe. You can get a really good gaming computer for a decent price. but. We're at the beginning of where in 2020, in 2022, in 2024, you're going to have to be buying some pretty high-end hardware to stay relevant. Uh, and I think that's just where things are going. We're re we've reached a point where photorealism in games will be coming around sooner than you think because there's Volta out there and that you know that's what, more than twice the performance of this. For, for sure. There's, you know, a Threadripper 32 core processor that's more than, you know, what, hundreds of times the speed of any of these old processors. The RAM, now the mainstay is like 3200 speed, uh, you know, where it wasn't long, but, you know, in the 6700K days where uh, 2133 was just, you know, that was fine. It's not fine anymore. So I'm not watching you on Instagram and Twitter. Hold on to all your hardware. Hold on to it tight because you're not going to get to use it for long, in my opinion. And AMD has changed the game. And uh, we didn't see, you know, if you look at Crisis 1 and Crisis 3, yeah, Crisis 3 looks a lot better. But I think when you look at Crisis 3 and Crisis 5, if that ever ends up being a thing, or a video game from the year 2022, uh, things are going to be a lot different. And we're going to start seeing that come through now because the developers are getting that high-end hardware now. And it's very attainable for any developer to just go grab a 32-core processor and start programming a game to work on, you know, uh, half of those cores or a quarter of those cores, where 
uh, until very recently, game developers and uh, even program developers, Adobe, stuff like that, uh, Blender, all of them were kind of pigeonholed into using a quad core, maybe a quad core with hyper threading as kind of just a general CPU. Now, eight cores, 16 cores is just going to be the mainstay. I'm Matt Watch Timmy Joe on Instagram and Twitter. If you like this video and my uh, kind of cheat around not having Threadripper, hit the like button. Maybe subscribe. You can help me hit that 60,000 subscribers. We're like less than 500 away. And uh, maybe one day I'll get one of those high end Threadrippers. Uh, but for now, I will probably just play with my old Pentium 4s and Durons. And we will have a grand old time. And if you want to contribute to any old hardware, if you have a Pentium 2, I would love one. Or maybe even Pentium 1. Uh, me at TimmyJoe.com. Or if you want to help me uh, financially, there's Patreon. You could always use a couple of bucks. All I ask is for one or two or three dollars. We have a lot of you. We're up over $150. You know, that helps out. That's an extra little bit of hardware I can buy. And then uh, what really helps me out is uh, when you buy things through Amazon. I don't have really anything on the table. Uh, you know, I guess some of this stuff you could still buy on Amazon, but uh, I'll, I'll put some links below or just use my link and then search from there and you can make, help me make me some money. But I'm not watching Joe Instagram and Twitter. One last time, follow me on Twitter and I got to see you guys later. But it's been fun discussing old hardware with you. Pentium 4!